Hello and welcome to the Wildlife Community Podcast. I'm Helen Hyde and I'm joined by Paul Sargent. Hello. Hello. We're both big wildlife friendly gardening fans and each episode we hope to bring you some practical gardening tips, expert advice and news about the wildlife living in our gardens. And this week we're talking hoggies. That's because this week is Hedgehog Awareness Week, running from the 2nd to the 7th of May and organised by the British Hedgehog Preservation Society to raise awareness of the problems hedgehogs face. This year, they're asking us all to create our very own hedgehog haven in our gardens. They, they do travel um, one to two miles a night. So, I mean, that's a lot of gardens. People think that perhaps they only come into their garden, but what your hedgehog will have probably visited you know, many, many other gardens that night. So it's important that they have that access. That was Faye Vass, the Chief Executive of the British Hedgehog Preservation Society, who's appearing on our podcast shortly, along with ecologist Chantelle Brown. If you're out, obviously, at night time and you hear the huffing sound, then that will probably be hedgehogs. I think a more common way to know that you've had hedgehogs in your garden is through either the poo or the tracks. Now, for the last three years, Paul, we've actually had a hedgehog in our garden and I can't explain it, but it's just such a lovely feeling. I'll often um, pop out at dusk and listen out for her and I've decided she's a girl because we've also captured on camera a bigger hedgehog visiting our garden. But we haven't yet had any hedgehog babies. I really want hedgehog babies. (laughs) Do you have a hedgehog in your garden? We do, yeah, we get hedgehogs in our garden. I've had a hedgehog friendly garden for a few years now or two Mm -hmm. hedgehog friendly gardens front and back so we're lucky enough to live in a a, quite a rural area and the local landowner does a lot of work to you know provide habitats for hedgehogs in our village so we've got yeah we've got quite a big population of hedgehogs locally and I'm sorry to make you jealous but we did have hedgehog babies a few years no, ago yes properly <laughs> jealous yeah that was awesome i was so pleased when i spotted that little nest appear oh yeah. gutted so what is it about our gardens what do you think have we managed to make hedgehog havens well yeah there's a number of things you can do to encourage hedgehogs the main one is going to be access they wander around quite extensively in the evenings so is that because we're both rural? Because you also hear about a lot of people who live in the middle of towns and cities who have hedgehogs visiting their gardens. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit like foxes as well. They're, they'll take advantage of any opportunities or niches that, that are presented to them. So rural can be actually detrimental because of the modern farming practices. Um, a lot of the hedgerows have disappeared. Um, a lot of pesticides are, are applied so that that kills off lots of the uh, prey species of hedgehogs. So, you know, there's there's some places mm. where they, they fare much better in, in towns and, and cities than they do in the countryside. Yeah, contrary to popular belief, hedgehogs don't just eat slugs. They eat all kinds of invertebrates. Their favourite being crunchy beetles, from what I understand. <laughs> yum, yum. Yeah, but also worms as well. So you can imagine if if you're a landowner or a farmer and you're you're trying to get rid of um, creepy crawlies that cause pest damage to your crops, then you're mm. also indiscriminately getting rid of all the other invertebrates that you know hedgehogs like to eat. So they might start relying on supplemental feeding a lot more. So um, are you regularly seeing hedgehogs then each year? Yeah. Yes, out and about, um, either when I'm walking or with my dog. Also, you know, just randomly, if I open the door to let the dog out for a wee, I sometimes see a hedgehog trotting up and down the garden path. And it's such a lovely sight, isn't it? I don't know what it is. I can't explain it. But there's something about seeing a hedgehog sniffling around your garden that brings a little warm glow to a lot of people. And that's why it's actually become, I think, our favourite wild animal. Yeah. We do love our wildlife in the UK. It's um, part of our national personality. So we do a lot of looking after our garden wildlife and and especially the ones that are very noticeable, even though they're they're nocturnal. You know, you you can easily detect them. You can put out a wildlife camera or you can make a little 
footprint trap where you can put feed out for for a hedgehog and then you can see evidence of their passing hang on a minute i haven't heard about this i haven't heard about this footprint idea Ah, okay tell me more about that so there's a couple of ways of doing it you make you basically they both use a little tunnel and you you lure the hedgehogs in with a bit of food Mm -hmm. and you can either put down a pad of ink and then a bit of paper or you can use sand roll out the sand flat and the idea for both of them is that you look for the footprints the next day and um, identify it with a little key of wildlife footprint identifying features so you can distinguish between mice rats hedgehogs and and yeah so that's a low a low tech uh, low cost way of knowing for sure whether you've got a hedgehog in your garden and also a way to do it without disturbing them if they're nesting or hibernating Yeah. But and the, the, if you use ink, that doesn't bring any harm to the wildlife? I'd recommend using vegetable-based inks, just in case. Tell me a little bit about your hedgehog babies. Oh, yes, I mentioned those. Yeah, I skimmed over it. I didn't want to make you too jealous. But, uh, <laughs> so in our back garden, we have a little raspberry patch on a raised bed and don't mow around the edges of my lawns. The relevant bit of information is I scythed the long grass in late summer, July, August kind of time, and made hay with it, basically. I left it in piles, and mm-hmm. I noticed that some of this hay had moved and had been <laughs> taken into their raspberry patch. After a while, I noticed that my dog was really interested in the raspberry patch also, so I locked him up in the uh, in the house while I went out with a torch to have a look around. And yeah, I noticed that there was a female hedgehog gathering this hay, taking it up onto the raspberry patch, in, in amongst the canes, made a little ball. And yeah, and she proceeded over the coming weeks and months to uh, raise a little litter of hoglets. But yeah, the, the thing that made me really happy was that w- was a natural nest. I p- played a small part in making mm. room uh, for nature and probably an essential part, but the mum did it all herself. How many hoglets were they? Did you, was there ever a, a, a chance where you could count them? I didn't, no, no. There was, there was a few. Um, mm. d- I didn't want to disturb them. Yeah, they do. They they learn from the mum, don't they? Yeah, yeah. They stay yeah, with they, them. They do a little conga line um, and get taught what you know. What are the best spots to snuffle for? Leather jackets in a lawn, or or be crunchy beetles, um, mm. or how to pull up worms without uh, snapping them. <laughs> <laughs> what about? Do you think you've ever seen one of the hoglets back in your garden? I mean, that's a silly question in a way to ask because how would you differentiate but do you think that they came back yeah like you say it's hard to tell without um having some kind of uh tracking mechanism so i know Mm. when there's official scientific studies done there they'll use paint dots or tracking devices um but yeah, we, we just have to fantasise. <laughs> OK, so we have both mentioned that we've had hedgehogs in our gardens. But the headlines that we're seeing quite a lot, actually, is about the, the plight of hedgehogs, that actually numbers are dwindling to quite a concerning state. Yeah, it's a it's a sad, another sad downward curve in, in terms of wildlife. Um, like most wildlife, they prefer a mosaic of habitat. Mosaic's a bit of a buzzword at the moment, but it's 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 a buzzword for a really good reason. If you if you speak to an ecologist, they'll they'll talk about mosaic ha- habitat being really important um, on a big scale, but it's really important on a small scale as well. So if you have a garden, you can create a mosaic habitat, which would involve having a pond, having a hedgerow, having mm-hmm. a wild or wildflower area, having a short area of grass that you mow you know you might mow a a ride through the middle of your wildflower meadow and you might leave the edges like I do to Mm. to get rank um as they say it's a a horrible word yeah yeah it means long grass um that's very rarely cut so that you know having those different change uh changing habitats is really important and Um, you you don't need 
a big garden either because the way you're sort of speaking might put some people off but actually we have a very very small garden it's a little wraparound garden as well so there's no big spaces to it but even we've managed to put in there's a lawn but there's also a little veg patch there's a log pile there's some decaying wood and um, there's areas that we leave where we don't ever mow it Yes. And even in the, like a really, really small patch like that, we've managed to provide this sort of mosaic of, of landscapes to enable more a more varied wildlife to visit. Exactly. Yeah. No, a mosaic, they can be small, <laughs> um, <laughs> no less beautiful and, and no less attractive, especially to, to hedgehogs. You know, they'll eat, they'll eat earthworms, they'll eat beetles, leather jackets, larvae of all kinds of species. So I wanted to find out a little bit more about the plight of our hedgehogs in Britain and who better to ask than the Chief Executive of the British Hedgehog Preservation Society who are running this Hedgehog Awareness Week. That's Faye Vass. Thank you, Faye, for joining us. You're the Chief Executive of the British Hedgehog Preservation Society. Can you tell us a little bit about the society? Why do we need a preservation society for hedgehogs? Yeah, um, it was founded back in 1982 by Major Adrian Coles. He'd found a hedgehog trapped in a cattle grid on his land and realised it, it couldn't get out without his help. So uh, he managed to rescue that one and then he, he was a county councillor. So he used his influence to get ramps installed in cattle grids across the county. Um, and from the sort of publicity that, was, that, that came from that, he founded the Hedgehog Society. Um, that was, like I say, back in 1982. And now we're, we're ho hopefully going from strength to strength. There's about 11 or 12,000 supporters we've got now. Um, wow. And we send out lots of information to schools and vets and, and all sorts of things. Um, but hedgehogs are, you know, despite our efforts, are in decline. So, you know, the Preservation Society is needed now more than ever. Why for you, the hedgehog? What is it about the hedgehog that makes you want to look after them? Um, I, I love all wildlife, but hedgehogs especially are, are you know, obviously my favourite. <laughs> um, they, uh, they're, they're really accessible. And I think that's perhaps why a lot of people love them so much with, with most wildlife. You know, there's there's a fight or flight tendency and you just see the back of them disappearing if you're lucky. Um, whereas a hedgehog, you know, it curls up when it's it's sort of alarmed. So if you just sit still and quiet, then it'll uncurl. You can watch it eat and you can sort of have more interaction with it than you can with a lot of wildlife. And I think that's a lot of people's first experience of wildlife. It certainly was mine um, being allowed to stay up late. Uh, you know, look out for the hedgehog that we knew was visiting the garden and, and watch it, you know, eat its food while we sat quietly and, and uh, enjoyed its visit. It's the same for me, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the, the numbers, the stats, the facts behind this. Why more than ever now should we be worried about hedgehogs? Well, hedgehog numbers have, have declined dramatically um since the, the year 2000 they've they've declined by half in rural areas and by a third in, in urban areas so i mean that that is an unsustainable and really worrying decline um we've joined forces with another charity called people's trust for endangered species and we've launched mm -hmm. a project called hedgehog street to sort of try and combat the, the, this um this fall in numbers um, and we get people to sign up as hedgehog champions to the to the Hedgehog Street website. I think we're nearly at 100,000. We're trying to get to 100,000 for our 10th anniversary because it's the 10th anniversary of the Hedgehog Street project. Um, and, you know, we're trying to get people to make small changes in their gardens and areas to to improve the habitat for hedgehogs. If we don't do this work and 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 think more cleverly and practically about hedgehogs, what would happen? I mean, they're now on the the red list as an endangered species. What does that actually mean for them for their future? Yeah, I mean, they're listed on the UK uh, red list as, as vulnerable to extinction. So ultimately, you know, that's that's the the long term fear. And certainly in some parts of the country, that that's probably already happened. You know, they probably are areas of of the, of the country that have no hedgehogs anymore. Um, if there's not enough good habitat for them and that habitat doesn't link up to other parts of good habitat then you know the population is just not sustainable in that area so it's really important to try and open up the habitat for them again so they've got plenty of, of access to food and shelter and mates um, and, and you know plenty of plenty of good land that they can use. 
And that's the basis of Hedgehog Street, isn't it? And, the, and I suppose is that the number one piece of advice we give to people? It is about access. It's about allowing the hedgehogs to move around freely. Yeah, certainly it's one of the most important things you can do in, in your garden um, is just make sure, you know, all green spaces um, that, that, that are managed by councils or what have you, is make sure that there is access in for hedgehogs. It's only a sort of um, 13 centimetre square gap that's needed, about the size of a CD case. So it's not, you know, you're not talking major reconstruction. Um, and it is really important to allow them that habitat. They they do travel um, one to two miles a night. So, I mean, that's a lot of gardens. People think that perhaps they only come into their garden, but what your hedgehog will have probably visited you know, many, many other gardens that night. So it's important that they have that access. It's Hedgehog Awareness Week. Why do we need an awareness week? What's the point of doing something of that, of that nature? Yeah, Hedgehog Awareness Week we've run for quite a few years now. Um, and it's just a, a focus for all the efforts that we, we make. And we reach more people during that week because we, we sort of intensely advertise the week and advertise things like competitions and all sorts of things that we can get involved with on social media. So we, we reach more people that week and, and hopefully those people stay um, with us and support us. And we'll see you know what, what they can do to help hedgehogs throughout the year then. It's also a way of, of letting um, hedgehog rehabilitators have you know, either an online or, or a physical event when, when times allow um, to in, in let people know in their local area that they're there and to raise funds for their, their own local rescue, which are, which are all independent. Fantastic. And we can find you across social media. Yeah, at Hedgehog Society on Twitter and, and Facebook um, and britishhedgehogs.org.uk for our website. Well, Paul, that sounded like quite a pessimistic outlook for the hedgehogs, quite worrying stats and facts about them. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I, you know, when I was a kid, I um, I never saw a hedgehog alive. Um, no, I don't think I did, actually. Yeah. So the decline started, you know, quite a few decades ago. I've probably seen more hedgehogs in, in my more recent years than than I have or did when I was younger which is I which is feel strange. that as well but I don't know yeah. if that's just because I'm more aware or looking I think so, it's a bit of both yeah because I yeah. become more interested in more different kinds of wildlife when I was younger I was I was mostly just interested in birds but um I'm interested in all of it now so I'm definitely more aware and I'm aware of the plight you know that those those facts and figures about the decline I'm aware of, but also I'm really into bees, so um, I, uh, I'm an invertebrate, so I, I know about those parallel declines too. But that's uh, the point, isn't it? If you yeah. become more interested in something, you're more likely to see it and spot it and yeah. therefore care for it or, or, or want to become even more interested in it. That's the whole point of things like Hedgehog Awareness Week. Yes, yeah, no, I... I fully support these um, these ways of engaging with the wider community. Um, I think it's a great idea to get people involved because it it's just a little spark of interest. But the good news is that you know in villages like mine and uh, and villages like yours, um, it just takes one one person or one family, one household to to start doing little things to to help the wildlife in their garden like hedgehogs and it spreads out so that's why it's really important to you know provide access to your garden try and inspire your neighbors speak to your neighbors and it, and as you say this news travels fast because i have to admit that over the winter because people in my village knew that i was interested in hedgehogs on two occasions they brought me a hedgehog that they'd found out and about that they thought wow. was a little underweight and, you know, a little bit too small and needed feeding or needed. And I, and I took it along to the local um, hedgehog hospital in Tetbury. So it's a, it's wonderful how this sort of news travels and, and the idea grows that people do need to yes. look out for and care for their wildlife. The wildlife grapevine. 
Exactly. So the real question is, what can we all try and do to help our hedgehogs? Um, and I caught up with Chantelle Brown, who's um, an ecologist who regularly advises Wildlife World to find out her top tips for encouraging and caring for the hedgehogs in our garden. What is it about the hedgehog? Why is it consistently at the, at the top of our most liked animals in Britain? What is it about them? I think it's how iconic they are as garden wildlife. They're, they're unmistakable for anything else. And those prickles, I think there's something about them that is strangely endearing as they're not ever used in, well, they're seldom used in defence. Um, but, but those prickles really are such a unique characteristic of them that I think we all find slightly endearing, if that's not a bit mad. <laughs> and I think I agree. What about you? Do, you? do you love a hedgehog? I absolutely love them. And I think it's partly now you almost love them more than ever because it's such a treat to see them. Obviously, there's so few of them around now that when you do get the chance to see one, you feel like you're really let into a different world. And I think that's also because they're nocturnal aren't they? Yeah, so, it's really exciting, isn't it? Very exciting. Yeah, they are just very, um, very secretive in a way, I think, as well, mm. which makes us intrigued by what they get up to whilst we're sleeping away. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have hedgehog in your garden? Have you ever seen signs of them in your garden? Yes, we did actually release some hedgehogs, a pair, a boy oh, wow. and a girl from a rescue centre. And when we released them they mated and I wasn't sure quite what was going on but I I did inquire with the rescue centre the next day because I heard them and I wasn't sure that hedgehogs could possibly make that much sound <laughs> but apparently they are in fact quite noisy with a huffing sound and when they mate it's notorious for being a lengthy noisy process and that's what we heard that night sat out was a very lengthy very noisy mating process really yeah <laughs> <laughs> so is that one of the signs that you can listen or look out for to know whether you have a hedgehog visiting your garden yes absolutely if you're out obviously at night time and you hear the huffing sound then that will probably be hedgehogs i think a more common way to know that you've had hedgehogs in your garden is through either the poo or the tracks. So the tracks, obviously they're quite light. They only weigh about a kilo. So you're gonna to have to have some mud exposed in your garden that's quite soft for you to see the tracks. But what they look like, they've got, they've got five toes, but they tend to just, the, the tracks are just four toes often that come up. And they basically look like if you've ever seen a sort of toddler's first artwork where they've put their hands in paint and walk their hands across paint. It's yes. exactly like that. It's like a little toddler's, a little human hand. Um, so that's how you know if you've got them through the tracks. And then the other thing is the poo. So it can range from one and a half to five centimetres in length. And the notable characteristics are that it's often very dark, so black or very dark brown. Mm -hmm. And if you look close up, you may even see the remains of beetles in of there. Course. So you'll see the little beetle wings in there. And that's how you'll know that's what it is. That's how we discovered, actually. We, both we found some of it, the poo, but we also found the tracks. We didn't see the actual footprints, but because it had been walking up and down the same pathway in the garden so many times, you could see the difference in the grass. Yes, that is another really good way of being able to find them. They sort of tunnels that they create or little highways where they're trampling. Excellent. So if we discover that we or we think that we might have a hedgehog in the garden, what should we do? Do we need to do anything? I think the first thing to do is to make sure that your garden is safe for them if you know or you hope that they might be there. So making sure that there's no slug pellets that you've been using mm -hmm. and that you try and you know just do chemical free gardening if you can, then that will help with the safety. Then also making sure that there's lots of habitats that they can use. So things like leaf piles and compost piles mm. are brilliant and dead wood stacks are fantastic because not only can they hide in them and hibernate in them but that's also where all the detritivores and all the little beetles live that then is just this wonderful food source for our you know very greedy little hedgehog and very good for our gardening as well absolutely <laughs> yes 
What if we don't have a hedgehog? Is there anything that we can do? Should we leave out food? Can we do anything to encourage them in? Yes, the first thing would be to think of your garden as a, as a hedgehog highway. So how's your garden connected to all the other gardens in your street? So cutting a hole in the fence, just a small hole at the bottom, will enable them to come in so that they can then utilise everything that you've got in your garden. And then if you do think they're visiting, then it's a great idea to put food out. Um, but making sure that it is specific hedgehog food. You know, some people used to put out milk and bread, which is very, very harmful for hedgehogs. Mm. So make sure that you don't do that and that you're putting out fresh water and fresh hedgehog food and just enough so that so that they can enjoy it. You, see, you don't want to be encouraging all the neighbourhood cats and foxes to feed as well. We're in springtime now. What does that mean for hedgehogs? Are they out and about? So hedgehogs are just starting to wake up from their long rest over winter and the first thing that they're going to need is a really good drink and some food. So over winter they have inevitably lost a fair bit of weight mm -hmm. and it's not far off from when they start to think about breeding. They tend to wake up, have a bit of food, build themselves up and get straight on with the job. So building them up now gives them the best chance to be at the optimal, optimal weight to help them with breeding. So I would say you've got three critical windows for, for feeding your hedgehogs. You've got this time of year, so early spring when they're waking up and they are hungry. Get that food out into them. Then the second time is when they're in that breeding window. You want to make sure that they've got everything they need so that they can provide all the milk that the pups need and everything for them. And then autumn, you know, all of autumn is all about building their reserves up so that they're big enough to be able to sustain themselves through that long, cold winter, especially if it's a second litter of the hogs, then they don't have a huge amount of time before it gets cold and they need to hibernate. So it's really critical, that feeding period over autumn. When would we most likely see baby hedgehogs? And if we don't see them, should we worry? Their, their main rut, they call it, is in May and June, and their gestation period is 31 days. So, yeah, you're likely to see them kind of June and July if you've got little hogs running around, and they tend to be attached to their mum. Dad's not involved at all in the, in the raising. They're, they're attached to their mum for, you know, sort of three weeks following them around, and then they go off and they do their own thing. Um, so when I saw them in my garden, they were small and still following mum around. And that was in about June time. And then they disperse. Because we've had three years at our house now with hedgehogs in the garden, yeah. but we've never seen babies. Right. Okay. So I wonder, maybe we have a male and he's going off to find females elsewhere? That could be the case. I know they're also quite promiscuous, both the males and the females. So they'll often have lots of partners within each season. So, yeah, he could well be going off and sowing his seeds all over the place. <laughs> Fair play to him. <laughs> Thank you ever so much. Thank you. OK, let's move on to a question from our social followers. We're going to do this um, each episode when we hope to answer a question from our friends on social media. And this week, there's one for you, Paul, sorry. If there's ever a concern we talk about when we talk about hedgehogs, it's people worrying about rats. So particularly when they oh. feed hedgehogs in their gardens, it inevitably or can bring in rats to their gardens. What's the answer? Is there an answer? There's some answers and they're not definitive. So, you know, rats are everywhere. Um, that That's, mm. you know, they're omnivores, they'll eat pretty much anything including some things that you you know you wouldn't think were edible <laughs> and they're incredibly successful they're all over the world because of yeah. that um so you know the chances are you're going to have rats very nearby um and you know a lot of the wildlife friendly activity that we do in our gardens tracks all wildlife and like it or not rats are wildlife things that you can do to prevent cats nicking all your food they don't work on rats because rats will squeeze through any kind of twisty, turny hole. Yes, yeah, like say, we use the um, we use the ho the hogolo, which yes. has got um, the almost the ninety degree bend in it that you that, yeah. that the hedgehog needs to go around. And we have two cats, um, and they've never we've never kind of seen them on camera. You know, taking the yeah. food from the hogolo. Um, yeah. 
but they and they do seem to enjoy the hedgehogs i'll go out in the evening and, the, and my cats will be sitting there mm. just having a little watch having a little yeah, look no, who's you... this what are you doing in my garden <laughs> yeah yeah back to rats i did see an interesting suggestion from from it was actually from an admin of one of the facebook groups i'm a member of it's a really good one called the wildlife gardening forum and he suggested that a bit of clear plastic like um hinged to the entrance of of a hedgehog house or a hedgehog feeding station has been reported to deter rats now okay i'm going to do some experiments with this because that's the first time i'd heard about this he was suggesting that it's the because hedgehogs have such poor eyesight um they can still pick up the scent of the the food but rats are less keen with their noses but the plastic door in effect doesn't put off the hedgehog from going through apparently the gap. not yeah no so i i think it you know like when you when you go to a supermarket and you see those plastic strips um, <laughs> in front of the fridges the, yeah the refrigerated <laughs> areas it's a in my mind it, it's a bit like that yeah i think bit, this warrants yeah. further investigation definitely yeah it's the first time it was mentioned to me but if it if it can discourage rats from from stealing hoggy food then it's definitely worth experimenting with i'm gonna have a go in my garden for sure some of the more generic advice i suppose that i've heard is the importance of taking away the food the next morning so if there's any leftover food don't leave it in the garden and yeah. try to sort of learn the routine of your wildlife so if you know oh my, my hedgehog tends to come quite late at night time then I'll put the food out before I go to bed rather than putting it out at sort of four or five o'clock in the evening so yeah. that it's not out for a long period of time and only put out what you think your hedgehog is going to take so if you only have one hedgehog visiting you need you know sort of like a little palm sized amount of food yeah. whereas if you have more hedgehogs you can put out a little bit more and just notice the next morning how much has been taken and therefore how much you need to put in the next day to try and stop other wildlife from taking it yeah it's really difficult to know actually um you know whether you've got hedgehogs vid visiting your your garden or not unless you're mm. lucky enough to spot one when you're out in the evening um the other the other way is looking at your hedgehog feeding bowl so apparently uh, hedgehogs are messy eaters so they leave a lot of crumbs um but okay rats and mice tend to not eat there and then they'll take it away so oh so you don't get you, you don't get yeah. left with the crumbs they take yeah. the whole piece of food yeah and they'll keep coming back until until it's empty um Interesting. So look for yeah. crumbs around the edge of the bowl. Yeah. Yep. If, if there's a lot of mess, it's probably a hedgehog. If it's clean, then it's rats and mice or slugs. <laughs> you know, because I, I noticed last year that um, when I was leaving food out for hedgehogs, that the slugs like to come and um, have a nibble too. <laughs> Fair enough. And then the hedgehog yeah. eats the slugs. Job done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. If there's a question you want to have answered on our podcast, then you can get in touch via our social platforms. Follow us on Facebook at Wildlife World LTD, as in limited, or on Instagram at Wildlife World underscore UK. Just use the hashtag Wildlife Community Podcast. OK, last but not least, Paul, job of the week. Um, I think you've already mentioned this, so I think I can guess on this occasion. But what's the one job we should be doing in our gardens this week to attract or care for wildlife? And on this occasion, hedgehogs. Well, yes, um, because most of the hedgehogs now have come out of hibernation. They're going to be hungry. They're going to be wandering around looking for a mate. So it's time to speak to your neighbour and agree to cut a hole in your fence um, <laughs> or go around measuring up uh, your gates and seeing if there's a big enough gap. Speak to the, the neighbours and, more importantly, the landlord <laughs> about, about <laughs> cutting one of those off. Um, Always get permission from yes. the homeowner. Should we say that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, yeah, and definitely speak to your neighbour, um, you know, because they might have concerns. Little dogs um that could squeeze out so yeah yes well they might have a rabbit as a pet yes yeah <laughs> 
Thank you for listening to the Wildlife Community Podcast. You can find out more about the podcast, see any of the photographs of the people we've been speaking to and the wildlife they've been talking about on our website. That's wildlifeworld.co.uk forward slash blogs forward slash podcast. And if you want to buy any of the products on our website, just use the discount code podcast for free postage and packaging. That's P-O-D. C-A-S-T in capital letters for free postage and packaging. And have a lovely time in your gardens, pottering with your hedgehogs. And we'll see you on the next episode, which is all about bees. Something you're a huge fan of, Paul. Yay! My (laughs) favourites, yeah. I'm really excited. It's it's now solitary bee season. Um, There's a lot to talk about regarding bees. Excellent. Full on episode next time then. Thanks for listening, everyone. (laughs) See you then. Bye-bye.